Okay, for those of you out there that are algebra students, maybe you're taking Algebra 1, Algebra 2, College Algebra, or any other type of algebra course, somewhere along the line you're going to be taking a complete full test on functions because functions is a huge topic in algebra. But before you take this test, okay, if you are studying, why don't you try to pass my functions quiz? Because if you could pass this, then you're you know, probably going to do pretty well on your test. So what I have here for you is six questions that you absolutely should be able to answer correctly if you're going to be ready for your functions uh, chapter test. All right, so I'm going to give you an opportunity to answer the question before I tell you the answer. So let's start off with our first question. And the question is, is this a function? And I want you to explain, in other words, justify your answer. So here we go, it's a set of points. So I have the point one five, two nine, one three, and six four. Uh, please tell me if this is a function, yes or no. Okay, and again, explain your answer. Okay, so if you want to pause the video and work on this, that's excellent, but I am going to go ahead and start answering this right now. So the best way to answer this question, well, I don't want to say the best way, but I think the uh, what I think is probably the easiest way is to go ahead and use a mapping diagram. Okay, so you can draw a little map diagram like this. This is our X's, this is our Y's, and X points to Y. Okay, and if you don't know uh, what I'm talking about here, you definitely want to check out um, some of my videos on functions. I have a ton of stuff on functions on my YouTube channel, or maybe check out one of my full algebra courses. I really get heavy duty into functions, but this is going to be a mapping diagram. So let's go ahead and start mapping this out. So let's uh, map out one five. So that's this right here. Remember, these are X, Y points. Okay. So one is pointing to five, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. So two is pointing to nine. And let me do this one here, okay? Then I'll come back to this one because this is, this is gonna be the telltale one right here. So six is pointing to four. And now I have this one, one is pointing to three. So some of you might be like, oh, just don't, you know, draw another one and put a three like that. That would be wrong, 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 because I already wrote one, okay? One is already up here, so I can't write one again like that. So what I have to do is from this one, one is pointing to five and one is also pointing to three. Let's kind of maybe go down like this. And this right here, these two points is what we need to know to answer this question. So this is not, not a function, okay? So you could support this by saying uh, you have an X uh, mapping to two more than one Y, okay? So the definition of a function is that uh, each, a, each X, excuse me, maps to one and only one output, one and only one Y. Here we have one mapping to both five and three, okay? So this is not a function by definition, but you can kind of justify that by using a, a mapping diagram, okay? So you have a uh, definition of a function could go something like this. Each X maps to only one and only one Y. There's a lot of different ways you can kind of effectively say that. But using a mapping diagram to explain this would be an excellent way to justify this. Okay, there's a couple other different ways, but I would suggest you understand how to construct mapping diagrams because they're going to definitely be on your test. Okay, you're going to, you know, you have to learn how to interpret them. All right, so that is uh, question number one. And if you got this right, that's excellent. Very, very good. You're well on your way to doing pretty nicely on your functions test, but we're not done yet. Let's move on to this next question. What is the domain? So in your own words, okay, define the word domain. Okay, so in your own words, all right? So again, this is another big word in the topic of functions. And as a teacher, I would accept a couple all couple different varieties of um, descriptions of the domain, but what's yours? You know, pause the video and write that down, or maybe you put that into the comment section and then let other people kind of see what you wrote. All right, so the domain, the domain, okay? So the, the domain, all right, is effectively the set of all, okay? Um, I'm going to put allowable input, input, I can't write a spell here, input values for a function, something like that, for a function. Okay, so it's a set of all input values. So for example, here, f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. What are all the x values that I could plug into this function here without breaking it? Well, it would be the set 
of all real numbers, okay, I can plug in any number into this function and I can get an associated output value, which would also be, that would be called the range, but we're only talking about the domain. But uh, you can't put any value into every single function. Sometimes you can, but sometimes you cannot. Okay, so it's the set of all allowable input values into a function. So for example, if I had a function like this, f of x is equal to the square root of x, uh, and we're talking about defining the domain in terms of the set of real numbers, what am I allowed to plug in here? Well, I can't find um, f of negative 16 because I can't take the square root of a negative number when we're talking about the real numbers. This becomes an imaginary or complex numbers. Uh, so the definition for the domain or here or the set of all allowable numbers into this particular function would be all numbers x such that x is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so and x would be a element of the real numbers. There are a lot of different ways you kind of do that. But just know, hey, it's got to be positive or zero. Okay, you can't have any negative numbers to input into this function. Those numbers are not a part of uh, what's allowed into that function, i.e. they're not going to be a part of the domain. So another way you can look at the domain, let's go back up here real quick. Let's suppose this was our mapping diagram. These points right here, the set of all these points, this is the domain. And uh, over here, these are the output uh, points. This would be the range, okay? Domain, range. Again, uh, domain and range, something you're absolutely going to have to have a real command of in terms of uh, this definition and be able to express it in your own words and, and uh, define it you know, with problems like this on a functions test. Again, I'm talking about uh, those of you that are like the algebra one level and beyond. Okay, so uh, any of these things that kind of, um, you know, you're not quite feeling good about, again, uh, a couple of pieces of advice. I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that could help you out, but you probably want a more formal way to look at this. So again, check out any one of my algebra courses, algebra one, algebra two, even my pre-calculus course, um, if you're at that level, uh, more advanced about functions. So we can get very advanced here. This is kind of mid-range. I would say algebra one, algebra two, college algebra, intermediate algebra level, uh, this quiz here. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, move, look at our third problem for this quiz. We want to evaluate this function. Okay, so here's the function f of x is equal to 2x squared minus x for x is equal to negative 1. Go ahead and tell me what that is um, equal to. What is the answer? Okay, so do you have your answer? Let me go ahead and do it. So what you need to do is we will need to plug in negative 1 into this function. So a lot of students will make... Uh, all kinds of crazy mistakes because they don't use parentheses when they're plugging their values into functions, okay? Especially negative values like this. But this is what this means. This word evaluate means plug in that value into this function so it would look like this. So now I need to go ahead and simplify this. So f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 squared. Is negative 1 times negative 1? That's positive 1. So that's 2 times a positive 1. Now I have a negative of a negative right here, so that's positive 1, okay? So f of negative 1 is going to be what? 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. The answer is a positive 3. Okay, so hopefully you got this right. If you didn't, uh, you got to be careful again when you're plugging in, especially negative values, into a function. But that's what it means to evaluate a function. All right, let's move forward to our fourth question. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you. Well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. All right, so given these two functions, I got a function f of x, I got a function g of x, I want you to find f of x minus g of x. What is this equal to? All right, so go ahead and pause the video and work on this for a quick second if you want to do that, but I'm going to answer the question now. 
All right, so this is really easy. Um, effectively, all we need to do is replace the f of x here with this. This is what f of x is equal to. And the g of x, we're going to replace it with this. Okay, so, but we have to be very careful because we are finding the difference here. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. So f of x is what? That's 3x plus 4 minus, what's the g of x function? That is negative 2x minus 5. So again, what's going to throw a lot of students here is uh, this negative sign. Okay, they're not going to set it up correctly. And then they're going to get this wrong. All right, and this is easy points, by the way, on a test. All these questions here that I'm um, giving you, I would say are like easy mid-level questions for a test. But let's go ahead and finish this up. So this would be 3x plus 4. Now this negative, I got to distribute this negative to these terms. So negative, it's like a negative 1 times this would be plus 2x, negative times negative, and this negative times this would be plus 5, right? Okay, so now we could combine like terms. I got 3x and 2x, that's 5x. 4 and 5 is 9. So f of x minus g of x is equal to 5x plus 9. That is the answer. Okay, so let me just double check my work here. And it looks pretty good. Da, 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 da. Yep, I'm looking pretty good. And that is the correct answer. All right, so how are you doing so far? Are you getting all these right? If you are, that's pretty awesome. Maybe you've been watching my YouTube channel. And you're like, yeah, I'm getting these right because I've been watching your other videos. Whatever the case is, you know, keep up the good work. Okay, so we are done. Uh, let me see here. I said six questions. Yes, I said six questions. And I'm right. So there is more, one more question after this. So here is uh, our same functions. We still have uh, f of x and g of x. These are the same functions we were talking about in the previous uh, problem. But this time, I want you to find this. I want you to find f of g of x. OK, so go ahead and pause the video, work on this one. And what we're talking about here is a composite function, a composite function. A lot of students don't like composite functions, but you're going to need to know how to do a problem like this to be successful on your functions test. So let's go ahead and figure this out. So f of g of x means I'm going to be plugging in the g of x function, this thing right here, into the f function. Now, this is a big topic, composite functions. Yeah, again, if you're not understanding any of this, follow through on my YouTube channel or in my algebra course. But let me go ahead and do this problem. So the f of x function is 3x plus 4. So I'm going to be plugging in to the f of x function the uh, g of, of x function, which is negative 2x minus 5. So that's negative 2x minus 5. Okay, that's what I'm plugging in right there into my f function. But this is not done. This is 3 times, what am I plugging in? The g of x function plus 4. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify this. This would be 3 times negative 2x, negative 6x, 3 times, why I'm doing the distributive property here, uh, 3 times 5, that's 15, plus 4. Let me go ahead and work this down. So this would be negative 6x, and we have negative 15 plus 4 is negative 11. Okay, so there you go. Uh, let's see here. That's yeah. Everything looks pretty good to me. Of course, if I made an error, let me know in the comment section. But I don't think so. But do I make errors? Absolutely, I make errors. But what I've tried to uh, any person that does mathematics, and there's no such thing as a person that does, does math perfectly because it's a game of focus. So you could miswrite something. You could just quickly, you know, lose track. But the name of the game is to reduce your errors down to like 99 percent right like reduce the number of errors you make and so how do you do that by focusing okay double checking writing neatly clearly and of course knowing what you're talking about all right so this would be the composite function here f of g of x negative 6x minus 11 okay so let's go ahead and take a look at our last problem and uh, it is this Okay, is this a function? We're talking about this little um, thing right here. And again, you need to explain. Okay, so back up your work. So is this a function, yes or no? All right, do you have your answer? Okay, drum roll, please. The answer is no. The answer is no. But why? Okay, so if you just said no, like 
you know, on my, if you were my student in my class and you said, no, I would be like, well, yeah, but you know, I'm not going to give you any points, whether this is right or wrong. Cause you're not justifying it. So make sure you fully justify it. So how can you justify this? The easiest way is to use the vertical line test, the VLT. Okay. So the vertical, vertical line test is an excellent test to, um, test any graph. Okay. Um, to see if that graph in fact represents a function and the way it works is this if i draw a vertical line and it crosses through the graph more than once okay it fails the vertical line test meaning that it is not a function you need to know a lot about the vertical line test you also need to know a lot about the horizontal line test again uh things that i'm not going into because this is just a little pop quiz okay so if you says if you said, uh, no, this is not a function because this fails a vertical line test, I would be very happy. And if you got all these right, I would be like, you are awesome, A plus 100%. Matter of fact, I might just say, you know what, just skip the test, go home. I'm going to send you your A plus. I don't know what's going on. You must be watching that guy on YouTube, but you're doing awesome in algebra, okay? But again, this is just a sampling of the type of questions you'll be facing on a function uh, test. All right. Uh, if you don't know these, you know, questions here, if you didn't, if you weren't successful, then you got some work to do. If you are going to be taking any sort of real kind of challenging functions test. Okay. So you have an opportunity to take a test or, I mean, a quiz to evaluate what you know and don't know before a test. Okay. So what's the right thing to do? Well, to correct your weak areas, right? Because you, if you don't know this stuff, you, this is going to show up in your test, okay? These kind of concepts, these type of questions. Believe me when I tell you, I've been doing this for a long time, so I'm uh, pretty familiar with the type of test questions that math teachers love to ask. But uh, if this video helped you out in some small way, then consider helping me out by smashing that like button and maybe even subscribing to my YouTube channel. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.